His damage was 40 million. You're gonna have to take my word for it, guys. Hey guys, Asher from Magic Day Watcher of Realms. Welcome to the video. Man, I am still reeling after that last summoning video that we had here on the channel. I can retire in peace, retire from summoning for a while at least. Man, oh man, oh man. I have an epic hero that I want to share with you guys today, and I love this dude. I love this undead beast. His name is Jorge. He is an insanely good chaos and cursed defender who again is an epic. He's kind of new. I remember summoning him, I don't know, a month or two ago, and his kit looked very enticing. And let me tell you, he has delivered in a just a massive way. So good. As I said, he's a defender magic epic. What does Fasty say about him? A truly excellent epic tank. George brings a lot, uh, brings a ton to the table, especially with awakenings. Damage over time, damage reduction debuff, extra block, damage mitigation. Combine that with the fact that he's the only epic defender in both factions. Everyone should be thrilled to get Jorge on their roster. I like how he he uh, oscillates between the uh, the George and the Jorge here in the description. Uh, you guys can see his uh, his overall stats. For me, like obviously stats are incredibly important, but it's not about the stats on this dude man it's about how unique he is he's kind of like he's got a little atrox atrox whatever cerberus going on in his in his kit as well basically insane damage if you've been anything like me and kind of sitting on this dude for a while uh without you know investing in him check it out man check it out and i want to give a massive shout out to my man khaled who's actually taken over on the edits on this channel and i think he's been doing a hell of a job and he's the dude who really turned me on to jorge he's been playing as well so massive shout out to you khaled appreciate you man so here he is he looks awesome man he got a little udk vibes going on too if you ask me Ratings in game, excuse me, they love them, right? Gold raid, EXP raid, faction, tide, gear raid, one, arena, AOE, DPS. We're going to be using him in a bunch of these areas in today's video, or at least a couple of the areas. Uh, so we have him in uh, in a Mortal Warrior set. The gear is far from good. I tried to, especially when I do epics, try to do very realistic uh, gear on these heroes so you know it's not just the gear that we're taking advantage of. It's really the hero as well. We have defense bonus. We have defense bonus, and we have defense bonus as our main stats. His damage does scale off of defense. We're getting a little bit of crit rate, and crit damage can help you out as well. But he's a easy, decently easy, excuse me, hero to build. You just want some survivability. Now, I will say we're a little shy on the HP here, but still 46K isn't too bad. We have almost 10K on the defense. Again, there's a lot of room for improvement on these stats and on the gear. We do have Goddess's Grace as an artifact. I love this artifact on him. Increased defense by 13%. Gains an extra 4% defense bonus every 10 seconds on the battlefield stacks up to three times. So what does he do, Ash? So his talent is damage scales off defense, 30% chance of inflicting a five second plague on the damage dealer when receiving damage from ground units. Okay, this is very, very important. This, this is what makes his kit work. This is what makes him an insanely good, I mean, I hope I'm not neglecting anybody, but at least from my experience, he's the best damage dealing defender in the game uh, for epics. So deals 25% AOE magic damage to the inflicted and up to 10 enemies around them every second. Okay. So again, 30% chance to inflict a five second. That's that's 25% AOE for them and 10 other enemies every second. You can already see how this guy as a defender is a phenom in gear raid one as well all right okay the trigger chances increases as the current here the hero's current hp percentage decreases up to a maximum of 60 percent to to uh to to channel that plague on his corrosion touch this is an auto ultimate auto cast when triggered uh increases defense by 40 percent inflicts plague on all targets blocked by the hero and increases the damage of plague on all targets in range to 40 percent lasting for 12 seconds during the ultimate at A3, the hero's block increases by one, so giving him a four block. On his basic, deals 110% magic damage to one enemy. On the plague outbreak, his passive. During the ultimate, after dealing damage three times to a target not inflicted with plague, 
plague will be spread to this target up to three tar from this target excuse me uh up to three targets plague inflicted through spreading cannot spread again and will not spread to the target who has been inflicted with it so plague just like you'd think with the plague with the proverbial black death here arena uh, damage increases damage in the arena by 15 percent on his uh, passive his second passive at a1 targets inflicted with plague will also in be inflicted with damage reduction minus 10 percent damage reduction we always talk about this game has a a real lack of of debuffers in my opinion and he definitely has that it's 10 percent damage doesn't sound like much but at a1 it's really really solid and it's going to help you out uh quite a bit because there's going to be a lot of targets inflicted with that plague he gets the defensive bonus on a2 on a3 during the ultimate his block increases we already spoke about that all damage reductions plus eight percent on a4 and on a5 when taking damage exceeding 30 percent of max hp from a single hit gains damage increase and physical damage reduction for five seconds damage increase plus 30 percent and damage reduction plus 30 percent this effect can be triggered up to one time every 25 seconds so he can really stay alive uh pretty easily all right guys so here we are in the arena right uh we have a super fun squad we have a jorge an atrox and a cerberus all together you could do some nasty things here. The reason I think he pairs so well with an Atrox and a Cerberus is because they all have that kind of, they're different, you know, iterations, but they all have that kind of plague AoE ground effect dynamic, right? So we're going to set him up right over here. Keep in mind, his ultimates are, it's cheap. It's already ready to go. And we're going to put like Atrox down uh, next, right? Could have probably placed him one tile up, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. He has a hat suit. No, he doesn't. My bad. I thought I saw hats on his team. Uh, has a Valkyrie down. He sometimes they'll win first round, but they're never gonna win again. Never gonna win again after this strat, right? All right. So it, it is tough. It probably shouldn't have started with the arena, honestly, because it's tough to. It's almost kind of tough to parcel out who's doing what here in terms of damage, right? And there we go. I didn't use Cerberus's uh, ult yet. I'm gonna see if I can sneak by to the next round. We're going to go ahead and put Comet down as well. So we're doing this with only one platform unit. We have a Noma, but we're not even going to need her, to, need to use her. Excuse me. We're going to pop the ult right now as Cerberus. Going to easily dismiss this wave, right? And again, like I said, it's kind of hard to parcel out who's doing the damage. We'll take a look at the damage at the end of the battle as well. Wait, are they even going to be able to... Are they even going to be able to keep up right now? Are they going to lose right now? We didn't even use Comet. We just cycled between these three doing the damage, right? Uh, so yeah, he can definitely do some pretty crazy things. Let's try one more squad a little bit higher in the BP here. Well, we'll upload it, I guess. Uh, but again, damage-wise, it's going to be Cerberus because he he did his ult and his death right away. Uh, but our guy, you know, kind of hanging in there with, with Atrox there, right? Which you see, gear raid one. I'll do one more arena battle real quick, though, first. Let's do uh, this one a little bit higher, BP. Let's go in there. Yeah, let's not auto-fight it. Let's just do it again. It's pretty fun. So the cool thing is, unlike an Atrox and a Cerberus, this dude's a defender with a three or four block, right? So he can actually... He can collect, uh, control is the best word. I'm, like I was going to say collect. He can collect and control the mobs so they can't get by our little vortex of pain here with these three heroes, right? And you can see some of this is the plague spreading. He's defending, obviously, everybody here. He's blocking everybody. I'm going to start out with Cerberus again. And wait, wait, wait. Uh, Ardia. Ardia. What, what are you doing here? What are you, what are you doing here? Oh, my bow. Oh, my bow. Well, you guys get the point, right? You can do some really gnarly things because you can kill every wave that comes. And then by the time that this little trio can't handle waves anymore, uh, we can, you know, swap in a... Uh, we can swap it. Not swap in. We can use Comet, right? Uh, and they're all going to have a full ultimate because we have a Noma on the team. All right, guys. Let me go in Gear Raid 1. I got to show you this, dude, man. The damage. You're going to be... You're going to be... You're going to be surprised, I think, some of you guys, right? So Gear Raid 1, Stage 19. We have the Power Dominance off. Got an all-epic team here, right? Let's go ahead and do this. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to place him first down. I'm going to place him right over here and kind of towards the left, right? Uh, 
Well, actually, I'm gonna fit. No, I strike that. I'm gonna make sure we need him to block, right? First and foremost, to activate the talent. So I'm gonna place him right over here. The reason I'm not placing him in the middle is I'm gonna have Hollow right over here, so we can sneak in in Hollow's range as well. We're gonna use Iona. We're gonna use Dolores. He's also benefiting from Dolores, but keep in mind, all his damage is coming from the plague, right? Uh, not like critical hits, yada yada yada. So we're gonna go ahead and go greed over here. We're going to go with, we're not even going to hollow cycle or anything like that in this run. I'm just going to keep it, or laurel cycle, excuse me. Uh, we're just going to keep it super basic. Keep everybody on the battlefield the entire duration of the, of the fight, right? Let's put Maul right over here, right? He's got his nice ultimate range, as you can see, that will, you know, go the whole, run the whole gamut of the free space over here, right? Let's go ahead and pop hollow. Should have done that a little bit earlier. Let's go ahead and place a... So can Vortex? No. Vortex could heal him too. Let's do that. Let's get heals on Vortex too. Now, healing is a gift and a curse with this uh, hero because keep in mind when his HP does uh, cross below from the talent a certain threshold, he will have a higher chance of activating Plague. So, But I'd rather have him alive here and defending the entire battle rather than dying at some point midway through the battle uh, and not benefiting anything from him, right? So now we can go with Hollow again, get some Rage Regen. We don't need to use Vortex right now. We do have Laurel and Iona on the squad, but we don't need to use them. Let's go in here. A lot of control on this team with Mari and with Maul. I have Maul fully awakened as well, so obviously we're benefiting from the uh, from the freeze that he brings, the slow that he brings. Maul's great. Hollow again right now. I could have maybe waited on Hollow until these mobs come from the side, but hopefully we'll get back to her. Here we go, and it looks like we're not going to. Let's go ahead and use Mari a little early here. Keep him, keep an eye on Dolores' health. Okay, she's good, she's good. Hollow's activated, we're all good. Everybody's healed up, and now it's gonna be hopefully smooth sailing. Wait till you see this dude's damage, man. I don't think he's gonna out damage Iona, but Greed, I expect him to. Maul, I expect him to. Uh, let's see. Definitely a cool. Obviously, like beyond what I'm, how I'm showing you guys, this guy in this, uh, in this battle, he can be used as a regular defender, right? Anywhere you would normally use a defender, he's not going to be as tanky as like an Olog or anything like that. Obviously, he lacks the shield, the unyielding, etc. But you could still get utility out of him as a defender, especially in like Void Rift, where you'll need multiple defenders for a lot of stages. Here's Maul, and yeah, dude, we are like. We're doing great here. We are cooking. Uh, I want Iona to have... I want to start sinking a little bit better here. I've been pretty bad on the... Uh, getting all of my timings on everything. But let's use Dolores. Let's use Iona. Uh, I don't think... I think we can take Vortex off the battlefield right now. Let's go ahead and use Hollow again. Use Maul. I think we take Vortex out. Let's take, yep, cool. Let's take Maul out, put Laurel in. I said we weren't Laurel Cycle, but might as well, right? Get another, and get our debuffer in as well. Plenty of, I mean, there's already 54 out of 59 though, so we're looking absolutely fine. Okay, hollow. And that about does it. 55, 59, plenty of time, plenty of health on our wall. Mari, do your thing, freeze him up. Mari's so good, man, for control. It's so crazy that you get a control hero. Oops, control hero this good for free, right? She's a day three login, I believe, right? It's been a while, uh, but yeah, she's, she's nasty, all right? Let's go ahead and just keep using everybody's alt here. Let's pull her off. Sure. Iona, Dolores. Get Maul back in there for a little bit more action. Hollow up again. Uh, not that it really benefits us a ton, but still. All right. We're getting there, guys. The boss is finally taking some damage. One, two, three. A strong lack of anti-healing, as you guys can see on this, on this squad. But, I mean, I can just go auto-casting from here on out. It's uh it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun.
it's gonna be some big damage from our guy he's just he's just you know holding down the fort over there in his little corner the entire battle just making his way through the billions of mobs right no big deal man i love jorge he might be one of my new favorite epics in the game guys He's so cool, man. Having a defender who actually deals insane amount of damage and coming from a plague ability. There's something really cool about that. He was a, he was a unique addition for epic heroes in the game. Uh, sometimes I'm pretty underwhelmed by some of the heroes they're adding to the game unless they're like an OP legendary. So it's nice to see a really cool and diverse addition to the game that previously didn't exist uh, in this defender in Jorge. So I hope you guys enjoyed this guide, but make sure you stay tuned to see finally the overall damage here. I'm trying to vamp as long as I can. The good news is our wall is nice and healthy. We're looking fine there. I think this team, based on all that health left on the, on the wall, I'm sure we could tackle 20 with this team as well, right? With an all-epic squad, which is pretty good. All right, let's see. And all the gear is around what you saw in Jorge. None of these, none of these heroes are in like my legendary hero gears that you that you normally see here on the channel. All right, let's take a look here. Stats. Our guy. Oh man. He was a lot lower than he was in practice. This is very this is actually great. You know, I could cut this and redo it. But let me tell you something. My man had 45 million damage when he wasn't in hollows range, when he was in the middle tile. I'm gonna cut here and I'm gonna do another run. I'm gonna keep everything the same, but I'm gonna keep him in the middle tile instead. And we're gonna see, this makes it, and it was vortex too. It's not just hollow, it's he was in the range of hollow and vortex and keeping him healed really impacted the plague trigger amounts, right? That was very, very interesting there. I was expecting a ton more damage. So let me try it again really quickly. And I'm going to take him out of the range of both of our healers and see how we do. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So we changed positions. He did die momentarily. So the damage was... Dude, this is killing me, man. His damage was 40 million. You're going to have to take my word for it, guys. But yeah, I mean, his damage was, uh, was second to Iona when I did it. This time, of course, he's dying. I can't get it to be done like it was in rehearsal, but obviously you do want to mitigate those heals a little bit uh, to take full advantage of that trigger effect. It can go up to 60% on that talent, but as you can see here, there's some fine line, thin line, right? Some fine tuning, if you will, mixing my, uh, my words, but either way, man, I mean, the guy still is a powerhouse for a defender, right? For a defender to deal that much damage in terms of the plague. He took a lot of damage too, as you can see but man i really love this defender super unique as i was saying guys let me know if you have any favorite kind of unsung heroes in the game pun intended uh in the comments below much love and as always take care guys